Hello, I'm David Hunt and welcome to The Art Hunter. My guest today, she is a powerhouse in the art world. Get this, painting, video, sound installation, digital painting, sculpture. In 2003, she represented Australia at the 50th Venice Biennale. Wow, can't wait to talk about that. How exciting would that be? In Rio de Janeiro, almost half a million people went to her exhibition. Incredible stuff. Now, let's close our eyes. Now, let's all wait for a moment, people. Imagine we're in a parallel world with creatures with human-like features living alongside of us, but they have claws for hands and webbed feet. Imagine a whale floating in the sky and this guy called Graham and this extraordinary exhibition that's on at a railway station in what city? Mm, I think it might be Melbourne. My guest today, yes, she is the powerhouse that I've been talking about. Patricia Piccinini, hello and welcome to The Art Hunter. Oh, thank you, David. I'm really happy to be here. Now, let's start talking so much to cover. You're like, are, we, are you here for 24 hours? Have you got the time? <laughs> <laughs> uh, but let, let's start off because, you know, like every career has to have a beginning. Mm. And um, you, what's this about Collins Street, you know, like in a basement? You know, like, was that part of your early practice? Mm. Oh, an important part, a very formative one. So once I left VCA uh, with about 11 other um, graduates, we set up an artist-run space in the centre of the city Wow! in the mid-90s. And at that time, there was a recession on. Yeah. So we had this beautiful basement um, for very, very low rent. And in that space, we had 60 exhibitions. Whoa. Yeah. Whoa. That was like, I learned so much. That, that's where I learned about the potential for art. Um, how to talk about art, what, what people are um, connecting with when they look at art, um, what art can do. And where did the idea come from? You know, like, was, was it back then that your mind, like over my shoulders, some of the most extraordinary uh, pieces that you, you create, were you already doing that then or have you developed it as time has gone on? It started then. Right. I mean, I was 20 seven or 28 when I started that gallery. Yeah. And it ran for three years and now I'm 55. So that's three decades ago. Yeah. Um, but the ideas that I um, started looking at have evolved from then, but they, they, they emerged there. Right. Yeah. Now you're quite involved in trying to get across in your unbelievable art that you know the environment and the importance of you know us living with with the, the rest of the world tell mm. us about that well um during those years at the basement what i was really interested in was looking at how we understood the body mm. especially in terms of artifice mm. um, and so over the years that has expanded and evolved but it's still been about relationships, especially the relationship between the natural and the artificial. Yep. But beyond that, uh, the relationship between people and the environment, especially in the last decade because yep. of the climate crisis. Yep. So I look at that relationship uh, through the lens of this idea of what we consider natural and what we consider artificial. Okay. Yeah. And and, I, and you can really pick that up with yeah. um, one of your creatures holding a, a human type person yeah. or over my shoulder, that amazing man yes. with, what do you call that thing that's on his head? It's a chimera. So right. I often create chimeras. Chimeras are creatures that are made of different animals. I mean, they're creatures of mythology, right. like um, the Minotaur, for example. Uh -huh. yep. um, but I... I create them because they're a really good way to tell a story and to, and to um, describe an idea. Um, and as, with that work, Sapling, that's a work around paternity, um, especially around care for an infant 
Um, and this infant is ha half plant, half human. So it's a relationship. Um, and I'm very interested in plants, uh, especially because we've had these bushfires. Mm. Um, and also because um, we're coming to understand trees and plants in a much more refined and uh, intricate way. And yeah. we are now we're understanding how important they are for the environment yeah. and, and how connected they all are and how these ecologies are really important. Um, and, and that work was inspired by a tree in Doncaster that was in the way of, of a huge, big um, uh, highway, like yeah. a, I don't know, a 16 lane highway. And um, the Wurundjeri people were trying to um, save this tree because it was here before white people yeah. got here. So it's like a very important tree. Um, and, and, and I just thought, oh, this tree, they have this f amazing relationship. Um, there is real value. They can see the value in this tree, much more uh, value than we can see. Like we'll just cut it off mm. just to make our lives easier. Mm. But really that tree um, needs to be valued. It survived. It's like incredibly symbolic. It's there s sort of slowing us down, um, creating um, sort of uh, uh, just energy for us out of sunlight and carbon dioxide. Yes. Um, no, it's very, it's like a, a really symbolic uh, moment for us. Um, and so on, I thought, oh, yeah, I want to make a work about care for plants. And that's the, the genesis of that work. Well, it's brilliant. Congratulations, it's absolutely stunning. And when I've shown uh, people a photo of that, they go, oh, who's the guy? <laughs> I oh. No, he's oh. not real. And yeah. that is how clever you are. You know, like, how much time and effort do you put into creating somebody to look human? Well, that's very special work for me because that's actually a portrait of Dennis Daniel. And he is someone that I've collaborated on with, together with, yeah. for about 25 years. Oh, fantastic. Yeah, he, 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 we're part of the same studio. Yeah. Um, and he does all the digital work in our studio. And I asked him to be the subject and he accepted and I was thrilled. <laughs> um, and because he, he's also a, a very beautiful father himself. Oh, lovely. Um, so it is a kind of portrait of him, um, but it, he's a great resource because he's right there. Yeah. Like if he, if the, and so we have, you know, we have this sort of reference in the studio, like, like the verisimilitude of it is like really obvious. Mm. Like he's right there. If it doesn't look like a, him or a real person, yeah. it's like really obvious. <laughs> yeah. In fact, actually, a lot of people that we know end up in the sculptures. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. So what did he think of that when he saw it? He said, oh, that's not me. I don't look like that. Did he say that or did he go, oh, that's me? Actually, I think he quite likes the idea of being immortalised. <laughs> um, but, yeah, I think it's pretty kind of brave of him to be in it because he he is holding uh and has an intimate relationship you know like two heads close together mm. uh, a creature that most people would find abhorrent mm. and most people would find repulsive mm. um, and here he is uh, allowing himself to be depicted um in a, this very close connection mm. um and so um, you know that's a kind of that's courage i think mm. Yeah. I also love the fact that his um, t-shirt or jumper that he's got on is a little bit gathered and creased in one section. Yeah. That is so clever. It, it adds to it. You know, like, I yeah. think that's really, you know, like, was that a spare of the moment thing or did you plan it that no, way? No, there's no spare of the moment anything. Oh, no, no, not on these works. <laughs> no, no, it's every little wow. detail yeah. is considered, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yep. All right, well, let's move a bit um, yeah. to something totally different, mm -hmm. Sky Whale. Yes. What, what was, and, and still is, Sky Whale, and where, where was it first shown? Well, Sky Whale was originally commissioned by the Canberra Centenary Festival in 2012. Yep. And that work was just the mother, and she 
she, well, she was unclear whether she was a mother, but she was a, a, certainly a, a symbol of fecundity because um, she had these memories and, you know, she was ready to feed and she was like, like just a, a real kind of, um, uh, I don't know, a kind of fertile uh, figure. Um, and that work was about the idea that we are so fortunate that evolution has, has gone our way. Like we're here to witness it. Yep. It's amazing that anything gets born at all. Mm. Um, and the whales in the sea are mammals mm. and they evolved from small hoofed mammals and they went back into the sea and became gigantic and lost their limbs. But they still breastfeed underwater. They, they have to breathe underwater. So, I mean, it's a really hard place to mm. live in. Mm. And my thought was they could have easily have gone into the air like ah, bats have, okay. they're also mammals. Yeah. And perhaps it might have been easier. You know, they could have um, had gas in their stomachs and that could have been heated up and that's how they move through the air. And, you know, and that's just as sort of extraordinary as the um, evolutionary passage that whales have gone down. Yeah. Um, and and, and that's what, that was the work, it's just the wonder of nature. Yeah. Uh, and I just thought she was incredibly sort of life affirming and, and beautiful. Mm. And at the time, a lot of people um, loved her mm. immediately, but some people didn't. Okay. And perhaps saw her as a slightly sexualized way because she had ma ma memories. Yeah. But, but for me, it's like, well, every mammal has memories and hair and gives birth to life young you know but but that's the definition of a mammal yeah yeah anyway so um last year oh actually two years ago um the director of the national gallery of australia nick mitchovic said oh we'd like you to do another balloon um for our collection because we just we just want to build on that culture that you you were creating and I said, yeah, I'd love to, because I think I need to answer the question that people asked me when they saw the sky well. Yeah. And that was, where are her babies? And so I made Skull Papa. Right. Oh. And that work is about care. Yeah. In the same way that this sapling is also about care. Yeah. And it was about showing that care is um, something that's open to all of us. Um, not just to, to the female of a species, but also to the male. And that's actually amazing that that's happened in the last, say, 70 years, mm. that it's become much more acceptable for um, uh, the temporality of masculinity to, um, to Im allow for men to be nurturers, mm. which is a great thing. Mm. And I just wanted to celebrate this and yeah. show, yeah, here they are, here are the babies and they're with their dad, <laughs> you know, and, and that's a beautiful um, symbol for us to see reflected back at us. Because yeah. that, I mean, there's a lot of crap that's happened in the world, but that is a great thing yeah. for everyone, not just for women, yeah. but for children and even for men. Yeah. So were you there when they went up? Yes. Yeah. What was that feeling like, Patricia? Because... Um, you know, like, well, mentioning babies, this is your baby. You know, like, you wouldn't have seen it, um, uh, you know, like, up in the air before then, would you have? Or would, would have been the first time or, uh, that you, or did you test run it before? Did you see it before? We did do a test run. You did? And that was a euphoric moment. Yeah. Because, like, um, you never really know what's going to happen with these <laughs> balloons, you know. Because well, they, they're special we shaped. Weather, yes. Yeah, I mean, you know, they could... Oh, the shape, yeah. Yeah, I mean, yep. they're quite difficult to make and they were made overseas in Bristol, right. same place, and you're just not quite sure exactly <laughs> how they're going to go. You know, they're quite hard to pilot, to control because uh -huh. of their special shape. Yeah. Um, so it was a, a huge relief and a, and a euphoric moment to see them in the sky together. Yeah. Yeah, to complete that project. Yeah. And, w and what about on the day when there were people to see it was... 
you know, when, when all of a sudden laying on the ground, it's flat and then yeah. they, they put all the hot air in it yeah. and all of a sudden it starts to rise. It would have been spectacular to have been there. It actually was because, I mean, balloons have an element of spectacle anyway mm. because of the, you know, the grandness, yeah. and the scale. And the noise that, yes. you know, like filling with uh, the air. Yes. But beyond that, Jess Green, uh, created a Skywell song and she performed it with her band. Wow. And it was just incredible. It really lifted us all up and it was just, it's a really fantastic song. I love it. Oh, great. Um, it's like an anthem yep. to yep. kind of um, just, just, the, just the incredible sense of being alive mm. to witness this. Mm. And uh, you, it, I mean, just because it was in the middle Middle, the, the beginning of the morning, it's just it's just incredibly life affirming. Like it was a great, you know, you just know it's going to be a great day. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Or maybe come because it's coming. They're coming to Melbourne. Are they? They're going all around Australia. Wow. Are you supposed to be telling people that, or is yeah, that? They're on a tour. They're going to ten venues. Oh wow. They went to Albury. They had a fantastic time there. Yeah. And um, they. They um, were inflated in this fantastic sports stadium, and it was like a really, we just had the best, best time. It was just a lot of fun. Oh, okay. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So you'll yeah, keep her, an eye out for that, haven't Yeah, they're they? going everywhere. Yeah. They're going to Cairns. They're flying all around Australia. Fantastic. Fantastic. Yeah. All right. Let's talk about Graham. Who's Graham? Oh, that's, that was a really interesting project. Um, so... Um, the TAC uh, came to me and said, oh, about slowing down. Right, yep. Yeah. And um, normally I don't, I, I don't really take up these opportunities. I mean, I don't have that many, but I, I tend not to work for films or stuff like that. Um, but it just, it just had a lot of social value um, and I'm really interested in um, the idea of encouraging people to slow down on the road. Um, and the idea behind that was, um, what kind of a body do you need to be able to withstand an impact at high speed? Mm -hmm. And you'd have to have a body like Graham, which is not a human body. Yep. Like it's really, really, um, fortified in uh -huh. many different ways um, and I learned all about trauma so yeah when you when you when when the brain um, the brain doesn't actually have to hit anything it just has to go forward and backwards and that jolt yeah. and, and the organ inside gets smashed up against the skull and smashed mm. up the other way it's yeah it can be catastrophic just the force um, but he's got a really big head with a lot of um, cushioning around it, a lot of, um, a lot of um, liquid to help stop the impact. And we, we certainly aren't like that. No. We weren't built to do that. No. We have this um, fragility here as well with our neck. Yeah. And um, yeah, so the idea was if you look like Graham, then you can, you can behave in this way. But if you don't, then maybe you should slow down. Because we haven't evolved yeah. um, to travel at these speeds. And were you happy with that project? Yeah, I was happy because, um, well, it it, it was it it uh, it gives me a sense of social purpose. <laughs> Sometimes I make art and I think, is anyone going to get this? <laughs> like, does anyone care? <laughs> like, you know, why am I doing this? <laughs> but with this project, it yeah. was like, oh yeah, no, this is a good thing to talk about with people. And also, it was, an, it was a good way to uh, discuss this really, you know, tricky thing, because you don't want to tell people how to be in the world. Yeah. Um, and you don't want to lecture people. Uh, um, but you don't want to, you want to do it in an interesting way where people kind of are intrigued by the idea and they, they kind of arrive at their own conclusions. And yeah, I think it's a, it, it was, a, it came at a good time because those fantastic um, ads that were made were incredibly successful. Good. Um, 
But after a while, if you see the same thing, mm. the same tactic, it yep. starts to lose its, its yeah, impact. Yeah. Exactly. Yep. So they need some sort of a circuit breaker to start, you know, reset. Mm. Let's think about it in a new way yeah. and then we can go and do other yeah. things as well. Yeah. And where yeah. is Graham now? He's in Ulu in Finland in an exhibition of, of art. And he was in the Q, uh, V&A, Victoria and Albert Museum, in an exhibition about car culture like a few months ago. He's like, he's like traveled the world. <laughs> Lucky <laughs> Graham, I he's traveling we can't. Exactly, I'd like to go to Finland. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so he's, he's got a real life. Yeah. yeah, so Patricia, it must be so rewarding, the fact that, you know, Graham is traveling, uh, your balloons, your whales are, are, are traveling. Mm. Uh, it, you know, it's, it, it's an idea, your concept, you know, like your, your brain, you know, it's, it's extraordinary, um, but, each time a, 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 you know, Graham goes somewhere else, you, you must think to yourself, this is fabulous. You know, like, as you said, people are getting what I'm doing. Mm. Yeah. How do you feel about that? I feel... Humbled? Yeah, I mean, I feel... Um, yeah, it, I feel great about it. I feel like I'm doing what I'd like to be doing in the world, and that is connecting with other people over ideas. Yeah. And I'm... And my work is a kind of, um, at its best, is a catalyst for conversation yep. around things that are important. Yep. Um, and it doesn't, like, I don't pretend to have the answers, um, but I'm very interested in the questions. Great. And, like, a big question that yeah. my work looks at is how we understand and relate to nature. Yeah. Uh, because without um, looking at that, we're not actually going to go forward with this problem around you know the climate crisis yeah, so yeah. i feel like yeah i have social purpose yeah. like i think like oh it's, it's yeah it's beyond me and you know, my work is not just about me yeah. in fact it's you know it comes from me but it's sort of got a, a, a broader relevance um and other people can come into it mm and get something from it and then go out into their own lives and be creative and mm. um, and do their own thing um, with this and be part of the social fabric around these very important ideas. Yeah. Talking about um, ideas and importance and the world stage, the Venice Biennale. Yeah. What an honour. It was. Yeah. It was amazing. Wow. Yeah. You know, like, you could have almost finished your career then. You know, like, I've done it. <laughs> or you've had too many other ideas to, to come forward. So what happened when you found out that you're going to represent Australia yeah. at the 50th Biennale? Yeah. What, what did you think? Uh, well, I understood the incredible opportunity of it. And it's really important that Australian artists have that opportunity because yep. we don't have that many chances to be on the international kind of stage with everybody else. Yep. So I worked really hard um, to to make an exhibition um, that was yeah representative of what I'm um, of the ideas that I was interested in. Yeah. yeah. And what was that one called? It was called We Are Family. Yep. And it was curated by Linda Michael. That was her idea for the, for the um, title. And it was um, about our relationship to other animals, especially the animals that we change around us. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Fantastic. Uh, I've just got to ask about Rio de Janeiro. Almost yeah. half a million people went to see your exhibition. Yeah. Now, we all know that that country is incredible with um, their, their love of art and their appreciation of, yeah. of wonderful things. What, what, what does that mean to you when, you know, like you were talking about, do other people get what I'm doing? Mm. Here, here you are, half a million people seeing mm. your work in one country. Yeah. Well, that was fantastic. <laughs> it was, I mean, it proves that um, cultural barriers are not as strong as we imagine them to be because there are some ideas that are relevant to 
people across different cultures. And, and somehow these ideas really captured um, the Brazilian people's imagination and they were really intrigued. Mm. Yeah, and they came, even though I wasn't a, you know, a name, like I'm not anyone famous. Yeah, so well, you, you must be fairly well known there now. Well, I did have a moment there where <laughs> the show went to four venues and it was, yeah, really well attended. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I felt really affirmed and it felt, yeah, it's good to have purpose. Yeah. 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 All right. Let's start talking about the elephant in the room. And there isn't, there's no elephant, there's a <laughs> whale, but there's no elephant. Yeah. Uh, you were a part of, right this very moment, and uh, a festival that was only on for a couple of weeks, but hardly got off the ground because yeah. of COVID. Mm. Uh, I'm talking about the Rising exhibition. Mm. Uh, you, your exhibition is at um, the Flinders Street Railway Station yeah. in multiple rooms. Extraordinary. Mm. You, you know how much I loved it. I've, I've gushed so much and I'll gush again in this interview. Um, just the impact of getting an iconic area like that, a, a room, the ballroom that everyone wants to, to see. Um, and you know, it's in, you know, it's in di disrepair a lot of it. What did you think when all of a sudden the rising people had you know, secured the space for you? Well, it wasn't all of a sudden. <laughs> I'm sure it wasn't all of a sudden. <laughs> Actually, uh, How long? Was a, How long? it was years, years of work. Right. And so to their absolute credit, they yeah. actually managed to do it because it wasn't easy. There were so many uh, things standing in the way and, lot, and some of them were really practical. Yep. Like um, there was no electricity there and, you know, there's no way this small, like, like it was built a hundred years, over a hundred years ago. So like, the, there are all these health and safety things that just don't, don't exist. Yeah, like, and plus like, it's falling off the walls. And, yeah, yeah like, I mean, no, just the windows, like yep. the glass is thin, you know, you could yeah. just fall out. Yeah. So there's just so many things that were problematic. Um, but and, you did actually make a point to me as well in uh, another interview we've done, mm -hmm. is that the doors, and yeah. your, your piece, a lot of them are yes. very large, you know, getting right. it into yeah, the exhibition in. Yeah, well, I mean, there's an elevator in there, which is great. Uh, but the, the door from the elevator into the space is only 83 centimetres and we couldn't expand it. That's like a domestic door. Right. And we said, oh, can we like, make this bigger so we can get the sculptures? And they said, no. In fact, we couldn't touch anything. Yeah. We couldn't put anything on the wall. We couldn't put a nail in the floor or the wall wow. unless there was an existing hole in the wall. Okay. So we didn't, we're not allowed to touch it. It's yep. totally... Um, heritage. Heritage. <laughs> yeah, thank you. you. We'll thank get you. there eventually. Oh, thanks. <laughs> so we couldn't touch it. Um, so we were told about a, a few months before it opened, like three, um, that it was confirmed, which was a wonderful moment. And it was a lot of work um, to get that happening. Um, but I'd been working towards that goal with with the studio f for about two years. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Because I was going to ask you that it, it takes you about a, a, an exhibition that that big, and there's so many parts of that exhibition which we'll start talking about in a moment. Uh, so about two years you would spend yeah. on. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's a long time, isn't it? But that's, that's what it rooms. takes. That's it's what a it lot takes. Of rooms. Yeah. <laughs> Um, well, look, let's start talking about it. Uh, we'll get to the ballroom uh, eventually, but they're uh, they're like vespers. Um, they're vespa-like a couple, yeah. um, sort of almost embracing, kissing. But they they're the only main characters in this field and and hanging as well. Mm. Of the, are they porcelain that are on sticks? No, they're they're injection molded plastic. Oh, okay. Yeah, I've worked in porcelain, but they're not, they're plastic. Right, yeah. okay. Because, you know, like you, like you can't really tell looking at them, and of course, yeah. I wouldn't touch one. Yeah. Um, where did that concept, where did that idea come from? Your mind, I just right. love it. It's just so extraordinary. Mm. Well, all that floor was incredibly inhabited, and that room was the gymnasium. 
Oh, okay. Yeah. Because it's a fairly big room. It isn't is. It? It's got yeah. these high ceilings. Yeah. Um, really high, and it's a voluminous space. Um, and I thought, oh, I'm going to do a field here, and I've done this a couple of times. But for this space, especially because of the height, I can do a hanging version, and that was the innovation in that that space. Yeah. And so um, that work is kind of like a, a kind of garden uh, of these flowers, which are the sexual organs of plants. And so they represent potential for reproduction. There's a lot of that in the show. Mm. There's a lot of that in evolution. That's yep. what evolution yep. is about. Yep. Um, and um, so, and and so, and they also they envelope everyone. So you you're going inside and and they're all around you. Um, and it's a very aesthetic experience to be in there. It's very mm. slightly minimal because it's white, mm. but they also kind of remind you of the architectures that the polyps leave behind in the barrier reef. Ah, okay. Um, the, they're the the um, the structures that they form to live in. And when they die because of the warming waters, they yeah. leave behind. This, okay. is, this is bleaching. Whoa. Yeah, okay. this, is, um, uh, th this is what they leave behind. And eventually it crumbles and it's just uh, like a, a t death, death, death mess. Yeah. Um, and so it's, it's, a very, it's a very complex situation. Uh, experience, I think, being in there, and it, you just don't walk straight through. You, yeah. you, you meander, don't you? It, um, well, yeah. you have to follow the path. Yeah. So it's, there's lots of references because the forms are like almost organ-sized, and so it's like it's like, oh, this is what it might be like to grow replacement organs. Like, did you notice they're yep. of a similar scale, yep. and they kind of look very visceral? Yep, true. Um, and so you're walking through, and you think, oh, this is quite beautiful but at the same time slightly uh, unnatural like you know it's like the ground is black like like in um, industrial farming like the plants that grow in these industrial places are like the, the soil is just there's nothing in it it's just black and no plant yeah. no, no weeds or anything it's, it sort of uh, reminds you of that it's a complex uh, experience and then inside it you see these uh, these machines that are almost like animals, and we're not quite sure what they're doing. Are they uh, embracing or are they fighting? Oh, okay. I didn't I didn't see fighting. Yeah, yeah, they okay. could be. Yeah. And part of it is is that um, for us the definition of technology, and they are technological um, objects or entities. Uh, is that we have control over them. Like we don't have control over nature, mm. but we have control over technology. Yeah. But when we see them interacting, and we in fact, it's an ambiguous what exactly they're doing. Why is a tiger interacting with a deer? Are they, are they actually hugging or are they actually dueling? Um, we think, well, this is beautiful, but actually I'm feeling a bit um, unnerved because okay. they have agency. Mm. And when technology has agency, uh, we're not in control and we don't know where it's going to go. And that is what artificial intelligence is all about. And scientists are telling us that we need to be aware that, uh, you know, th that, uh, you know, w the, there could be repercussions here. Mm. We, we're not quite sure where it will lead. Um, and there's a lot of anxiety around that. So, yeah, that space is... Um, it's beautiful. Very beautiful. Yeah, but it's actually got this kind of kernel mm. of uh, sort of, um, it's a kind of a, it's not a precautionary tale, it's kind of like a, oh, what's, what's is there something else going on here that we need to look at? Yeah. Yeah. All right, then you go into another area where it's, they're almost like pottery or plastic molded in their their shapes and their flowers and their and and you've got them displayed on turned up uh, office furniture. Oh yeah. Uh, so different and so but so exciting and so vibrant. 
uh, the colours you've used and the shapes that mm. they're creating. There's actually one over my shoulder, mm. which um, looks like a high heel shoe. Yeah. Uh, tell us about them. Well, that room uh, was the library in the reading room. Oh, okay. Yeah, and eventually uh, it was used as a kind of administrator's place. Right. Um, and that's why there are some remnants of that history. Uh, so those sculptures are old filing cabinets and things like that. Yeah. Um, and s which is interesting uh, when you present, you know, a high art on a kind of discarded remnant. <laughs> yeah. You know, what's it doing there? Like, is it art? What yeah, is it? Yeah. You know. Um, and, and do you know what? And a friend of mine, when I told her about it, and then when she went to see it, she said, "I reckon it's remnants of what was in there." So she picked up on that. Well, it's she's right. Yeah. Yeah, because that's. Pe people left in 1985, they just walked out. <laughs> like, you know, it was just like, that's it. And that's, that's what the sort of furniture that was left yeah, there. We sort yeah. of um, had to go out and find particular pieces. Of, of course. But yeah. that's what was left there. Yeah, yeah. And, um, and so those works are a lot more sanguine in that just the colour, uh, just th th it just kind of is suggestive of the vitality of life. You know, life lives. And a lot of life has to do with attraction yep. and beauty and and kind of just exuberance, you know, and, and they're all things to do with fungi, which are also um, the reproductive organs of mycelium. Um, there's a, and um, there's all these forms in there that are, we, we're familiar with. They don't come from nowhere. Mm. Like you can recognize things. Oh, this is coral and this is fungi. And, mm. you know, here's a shoe. There's a lot of shoes. Um, and so what they are are also chimeras. Okay. Yeah. So they're also chimeras, but not between two animals. Yeah. Like in mythology, but between an object and something organic. Ah. And... What the whole exhibition is about is really about these boundaries that we put up uh, around things in the same way that we have put up boundaries between us and nature. Mm. So nature's over there. Mm. We're not really part of nature. We can control nature. In fact, mm. we are the Anthropocene. You, you know, we've caused it. You know, that's mm. another affirm re affirming that we, we have so much control, we can destroy the planet. We're that strong. Um, and this is a problem. These boundaries are a problem. And that's what the whole show is about. Um, talking about, um, are they relevant anymore? See, in this work, they don't exist. Um, they're being crushed by the, um, the intimacy of connection. Like that boundary doesn't matter anymore. It doesn't matter if my kid's a plant. Still love it. Mm. Um, and I think that's part of the the uh, the way of going forward where we we think of another way of defining nature as not separate from us and that we go forward um, with other animals and that's why there's so many animals in the, in the show a and, lot of animals and that's why they're so beautiful yep. as well yep. um, and, and I try and kind of show the incredible um, just uh, value, uh, intrinsic value that they have. They don't have to do anything for us. They can just be. Yeah. And they're extraordinary. And often the relationships that I depict are, are one of, of, of uh, tenderness and uh, intimacy. And it suggests the idea that um, you know, we can have different ways of relating to nature where we are, where we are not um, away from it or apart from it or above it mm. or in control of it um, where it's something else but I actually don't know what that that new definition of nature might be I don't know what it is but someone out there mm. will see the show and kind of come back with something mm. and I will respond to them and somebody else will respond and, yeah. and slowly we yeah. will build up a new relationship to nature uh, where it works for everyone, not just for humans. Also in that room are these two young people 
with a, um, a clothes basket, um, yeah. a laundry basket. Yeah. What, what's in the laundry basket and, well, and what's around its foot? Well, that is the sign that people all over the world saw on their uh, news screens. So when we had the bushfires, people in Europe, in America, they saw uh, koalas with wrapped up limbs in washing baskets. Everyone knew that koalas were dying. Um, and it, to me, it was like a, a big iconic sign. And, mm. I, and to me, I just, I just wanted to kind of put it in the art world so that it will stay in the art world so we don't forget it. It's not, not a fleeting moment oh, in the lovely. news. Yep, yep. Um, because that's what happened. So, so many people rose t to, um, to, 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 to the situation. They rose and they, like there's this footage of this woman taking her shirt off um, and running through uh, live fire and emblems, picking up the koala with her shirt. I've and seen that. Yeah, yep. I know. Yep. That's an Australian woman. Yep. Yep. And I watched it and I thought, I want my prime minister or our leaders to have the qualities that she has. Yep. This is what I want in a leader. Mm. And I just wanted to make an artwork about that. Mm. Um, and that's what those girls are doing. You know, they are um, they're holding this koala and we know that a lot of those koalas didn't make it. No. Um, and we know that in 2050, New South Wales may have its, um, the koala population um, might have disappeared. And we know all of this, um, but I just thought it's, we need to make a work that, that commemorates this moment in time that shows that you know, we care. Yep especially young people care. Mm. And that's why it's two girls that are holding this dying koala and they are, have the strength and the fortitude mm. to do that. Mm. It's very beautiful, very beautiful. All right, there are so many other little bits of, of the exhibition, but you know, like, um, we've, we've got to get to it, um, which is uh, was, was all part of it. And a lot of people wanted, they wanted to go and see your art, of course, but they wanted to go to the ballroom. Yeah. And what you have done there, Patricia, is extraordinary. It took my breath away. Not the ballroom, what the way you exhibited in that room was the lighting. The music was absolute, well, it still is, um, but it, when I was there, uh, the music was unbelievable. All of a sudden, I, I closed my eyes for a moment because there's so much to look at in that room mm. uh, and that I just had to close my eyes because the music was so fantastic. It's Jess Green. She made it. It's it's brilliant, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So there's the ballroom. Yeah. Uh, and it's um, uh, it's in decay and, um, uh, and you know, like beams, you can see the beams. Not as... Oh, I shouldn't say it because people might still be going, but I'm going to say it anyway. Uh, it's not as big as I thought it was going to be. Did you think that when you first walked into the ballroom? Well, no, I thought it was quite big because I had oh, to you? fill it. <laughs> you were looking at it very differently to yeah, me. Yeah, I did. I thought, oh my gosh, <laughs> you know, um, what am I going to, you know, what am I going to make that's yeah. worthy of this space? Yeah, you yeah. Know, um, but what, yeah. but what you did, you know, like you were mentioning earlier that you weren't allowed to hammer nails or anything like that, but you've created this, um, what do you call it? What, what do you call it in the, the middle? Mother tree. Um, oh, the mother tree. Yeah. That's right. I did read that. Yeah. yeah. Um, so it's this huge installation with so much, so much hanging off of it or in amongst it all. Uh, that you, you wander around for ages and, and you walk back in the same place and think, I didn't see that before. Yeah. It is just wonderful. It's mm. really, really, um, you know, you must have had so much fun. Yeah, I, I did. I mean, it was really great collaborating, collaborating with Peter Hennessy, who's my life partner. He made that tree. Oh, lovely. Um, and he has an architectural background. Okay. And he did have a lot of fun because he, <laughs> like, how do you, not only just the structure, um, and did you notice that when you look at it, you can't quite see it, like, because you're seeing the reflection That's true. of the rest of the building. Yep, so it yep. kind of comes in and out mm. of focus, even when you're like directly in front of it and you can see yourself in it. 
Um, so, and he also made all these uh, sort of custom made uh, pieces of hardware to, to create the object. So we couldn't r drill into the floor or hang things or anything. So it's really, really quite a quite a uh, an architectural task. feat. It wasn't. Yeah. Like it is. Yeah. Um, and it had to have neon on it as well. <laughs> so oh, it was that's like, right. Oh my There's God. neon neon going off. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like oh gosh, it was a big thing. I mean, you know, this shows uh, it, it, a whole bunch of people made this show. Oh, you can tell. Oh yeah, not oh, just you me. Can tell. It's like a yeah. whole team of people. Yeah. Um, yeah, so um, so it's a, it's a tree. So I thought, I, I want to represent one of the life forces of our planet, and it's and it's a tree. And a lot of cultures do that, a lot. Not, it wasn't like a new idea. Yeah. Um, well, that tree and, of life, that whole philosophy. Yeah. Yeah, and now we know so much more about how they, uh, like a mother tree, can um, nurture. A, a seedling for 80 years from underneath. Wow. 80. Wow. Until she may drop over. Yeah. And that seedling can uh, photosynthesize its way to adulthood. Yeah. Um, so uh, to me, this is kind of miraculous. Yeah. Um, and this tree uh, was born from a mirror ball seed <laughs> that's inside. Yeah. And so like, it's like, whoa, it's like, and it's just there, and 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 part of the idea for that room is that um, with the music and the reflection of yourself, and like, and you're, it's a space where you can just be. Like in the rest of the exhibition, there's a lot of thought and a lot of doing, which is thinking, a lot of discerning, a lot of references that you can understand, and lots of links and so on. Was this, you're dancing, mm. you know, you're moving around the space mm. and you're just being, mm. and it's a real culmination of, of the experience mm. of being in that space. Mm. Like, mm. oh, I'm really here and it's almost cinematic. Mm. I'm almost in a movie, mm. you know, it's like, oh, it's, it's exciting, mm. like literally exciting. And yeah. I, I have, a, I don't tend to be excited very much in art galleries. Um, so I've tried to have that kind of um, real convivial uh, yeah. uh, sort of feeling like, oh, there's a, it's life with yeah. life. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you don't want to leave. That's the feeling I got. I, I probably circled it about four or five times, bumped into people I knew, stopped and had a chat. Did you notice this? Did you notice that? Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, it was a feeling of I wanted to stay. Oh, I'm glad to know that. Yeah. It, I think it's a very welcoming exhibition. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's, yeah, it, it, it holds a lot of different. Yeah. Uh, feelings, and especially the feeling of aversion. I think, I think for the people who know my work, they sort of expect it to be um, sort of a bit strange. <laughs> but for people who oh, don't, really? <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. Um, but for people who don't know my work, uh, sometimes, um, and in fact, I think everybody when they first come across my work, or even a new work. Um, they have this sort of push away from it. It's like, oh no, that's, that's, I don't know it, or it's too much, or um, it's sort of threatening to me. But then they kind of, hopefully, they get pulled in. Mm. And um, those feelings of um, being pulled in from, and e even feeling a kind of openness to something that is different strange um, is you know is a is a, a you know a journey that people can go on in that space mm. Mm. Y y this is the space to do it in yeah. in this incredible environment yeah yeah um, there are a couple of little parts I want to talk about within in there up the the far end is they, they're almost cousin it's but they've got um, you know like perspex hats on they're just hair you know, coming out of, um, they're, they're right up the end. Of and the there's diorama. about 10 of them. They're all, you know, like, and they're hair. They're in a... Oh, they're the, they're the mushrooms. The mushrooms, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. mushrooms, yeah. I should have said yeah. mushrooms. Oh, with those glass, mm. yeah, and the hair, yes, yes, yeah. 
Mushrooms? <laughs> uh, they are to me. <laughs> so, um, I mean, you know, I think they're fairly enigmatic, you yeah. Know? Uh, but to me, they're like these helmet mushrooms and they're made out of glass. There's a lot of glass in the show because mm. to me, glass is gla glamour. Okay. So I did this residency at Canberra Glassworks, knowing that I would have the show and, and making work for it. There's so much glass in it. Um, and I made these helmet glass mushrooms. And the hair uh, is the kind of mycelium. Like, this all makes sense to me and I guess not everyone would get it but they're a ring as well. And yeah. that's often when two organisms, these ones that grow in the, f in the, in the ground, mm. when they come together and they want to reproduce, they send up um, mushrooms and the spores travel to another place and a new organism can grow. Right, uh, wow. And interestingly, women, uh, this was a sign of you being a witch. If, you know, if there were mushrooms in, near you, Wow. Then you are rich, of course. Okay. Yeah, so that was one of the things that condemned you. Right. Yeah, okay. so that was one of those, why does this happen and what are they? Where do they come from? They're sort of mysterious. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and interesting that uh, you mentioned about women because um, a friend that I, I bumped into there actually said, oh, they're, they're mushrooms. And I said, but the hair, the hair thing, on, on yeah. that's why I'm not sure. And they went, no, they're mushrooms. Uh, so it, it was interesting. It was uh, a woman that picked up on that as well. Yeah. Yeah. The other thing in that room, in the ballroom, is up at the back on a little balcony by themselves yeah. is what? The Bond is a, is, is a woman, yeah, holding a, a sort of chimera creature. Yes. Yeah. And she's a favourite work of mine. And there's a lot of holding in the show. Like yeah there's a lot of connection and this is a maternal collection connection like she's a mother and there's, an, there's another mother in the show with the the dolphin work yep yeah yeah except it's the other way around yes nature is the mother is the mother yeah 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 um, or another creature uh, anyway so this is a shows the bond shows the relationship between a human and a transgenic creature but this creature um, is a chimera not just with two animals, but with an object, which is another uh, very contemporary idea. The idea that we could merge not just with something organic, but mm. something that's inorganic, like, like material. Mm. Um, and I guess it talks about the kinds of relationships that we could possibly have and what they might look like. Mm. Um. I was actually going to go back to the, the dolphin ish. Do you call it a dolphin? Or somebody said it looked like a, um, a, you know, like a, a sea creature, but they weren't sure. And I thought dolphin straight away. Well, it's based on the Australian humpback dolphin. Right, okay. And it's a, it's a species that was identified in 2015. We didn't even realise it was its own species. Wow, okay. Yeah. And, and it's holding a teenage um, Pr girl. Prepubescent girl. Yeah. yeah. And, and behind it is an all beautiful um, underwater a movement. Yes. Uh, it's, and that's pretty much in a room by itself. Yeah. It's pretty special. That, that's, and I, I, I thought to myself when I looked at it and I was in there for a while, I thought, I've got to come back. And that's where I went before I left, mm -hmm. is to see that. It really moved me. I, I found it quite beautiful. So, uh, Yeah, I, I, think, I think that work for me is about our relationship with Mother Nature. Like we expect nature to be there for us. And she is, mm. mostly. Yep. Yeah. That, that's amazing yeah, yeah. that uh, we are so nurtured and cared for. Um, that's what mothers do. They meant un unconditional love. Um, and I guess um, I just wanted to valorise it because there aren't very many situations in life where we see uh, the value in this. Uh, and, and we don't value uh, maternal relationships very much. We don't, we don't help women stay with their children. Uh, we, you know, we don't, we, yeah, I don't, I, and I, I just took this opportunity to, to give them, a, to give this relationship a space. 
Like we, we may not all want to be mothers or be mothers, but we generally all have all been um, at least parented, mm. if not by a mother, but by someone. Yep. Yep. Uh, it, in our culture, it tends to be female. Mm. Um, but uh, I just, I just wanted to <sighs> give it space and value. Mm. Yeah. Uh, and I haven't even touched on um, right up the other end. Uh, there's uh, a film yes. as well. But we'll, we'll we'll save that up and let people go and see that. And and I I sat through it twice. Oh, um, yeah, I, I I really enjoyed it. Um, it um, it was beautiful. It was absolutely beautiful. So thank you. What a pleasure it's been chatting with you today. And thank you for the extraordinary art that you've given the, the world. Well, um, I'm just glad you can connect with it. Thank you so much. No, my pleasure. My absolute pleasure. Thank you for watching. I'm David Hunt and there'll be another Art Hunter real soon. But make sure you check this one out on YouTube. See ya.